The International Military Tribunal, the IMT, convened in the ruined city of Nuremberg on the 20th of November 1945 to sit in judgment of the surviving leaders of Nazi Germany. The trial continued until the 1st of October 1946, when the judgments were handed down. Of the 24 defendants, 11 were sentenced to death by hanging. Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring, the most senior German leader placed on trial, was somehow able to commit suicide the night before his execution, using a vial of cyanide smuggled to him in his cell. This will be the subject of a different film in the future. The remaining ten were all duly hanged by a special team of US Army executioners, using two gallows constructed in the Nuremberg Palace of Justice's gymnasium. They were Wilhelm Keitel, Field Marshal, and former Chief of the German Armed Forces. Joachim von Ribbentrop, Hitler's Foreign Minister. Dr. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, SS Obergruppenführer and Chief of the Reich Main Security Office. Alfred Rosenberg, Head of the Reich Ministry of the Occupied Eastern Territories and a major National Socialist theorist. Dr. Hans Frank, head of the General Government of Occupied Poland, Wilhelm Frick, Reich Minister of the Interior and then Governor of Occupied Czechoslovakia, Julius Streicher, publisher of the Nazi Party newspaper Der Stürmer, Fritz Zauko, General Plenipotentiary for Labour Deployment, Alfred Jodl, Colonel General and Chief of the Operations Staff of the Armed Forces High Command, and Arta Zeiss Inquart, Reich Commissar of the Occupied Netherlands. The executions were botched, resulting in several cases of slow death by strangulation of up to 28 minutes instead of broken necks, and several of the condemned smashed their heads on the trapdoor of one of the gallows as they fell, the opening being too small. Master Sergeant John C. Woods conducted the hangings, assisted by Sergeants Joseph Malter and Billy Ford, all members of the 6850th Internal Security Detachment at Nuremberg. Woods was a controversial character. Discharged from the U.S. Navy in 1930 after being diagnosed with constitutional psychopathic inferiority, he had falsely claimed hangman experience and was selected as an army executioner during the war hanging 34 American soldiers in France in 1944-45. Internal reports suggested that Woods bungled at least 11 executions of convicted U.S. servicemen before he arrived at Nuremberg. And this is normally where the story of Nuremberg ends, with the executions on the 16th of October 1946. But what happened to the bodies of the Nazi leaders? What happened to the contents of their cells and their personal property held in storage at Nuremberg? Well, the story of what happened to the bodies was suppressed for years, but in fact a top-secret and rather macabre operation to dispose of them was swiftly enacted by the U.S. Army. After carefully photographing and labelling the bodies at Nuremberg, they were all stripped naked and placed into standard plain wooden coffins. This included the body of Göring, who had cheated the hangman. And this is where things took a turn towards the bazaar. Each coffin was labelled with a false name, each corpse being given the identity of a fictitious American soldier. For example, Göring became George Munger. On the morning of the 17th of October 1946, the 11 coffins were loaded aboard U.S. Army trucks under the command of a military police battalion that formed part of the Nuremberg Trials Guard Force. A twelfth empty coffin was added to the trucks, the reason soon becoming clear. The trucks, escorted by jeeps, left Nuremberg's Palace of Justice early in the morning and drove to Munich to a huge cemetery called the Ostfriedhof. The trucks pulled up outside the cemetery's crematorium, built in 1929. 
The crematorium staff were informed that the remains of 12 American soldiers who had been killed in action in 1945 had been recovered from the battlefield. In accordance with their family's wishes, they were to be cremated. The crematorium was surrounded by heavily armed U.S. soldiers, while the cremations were underway, watched over by several officers. It took all day to complete the cremations. The ashes of each war criminal was placed into urns, carefully labelled with their false American identities. At the conclusion of the operation, the urns were loaded aboard a truck and driven under escort to U.S. Army Mortuary No. 1 at 25 Heilmannstrasse in Munich, otherwise known as the Villa Oberhumer, the attractive white house of a wealthy textiles manufacturer that had been commandeered by the U.S. Army. Next came the disposal of the ashes. Not far from the villa is the Wenzbach, a small tributary stream of the river Isar that runs through Munich. On the 17th of October, U.S. soldiers took the urns to the Wenzbach and tipped the contents into the water. Then, using axes and their boots, they carefully smashed the urns into fragments and then drove away. Now for the second part of the clean-up operation disposal of the executed men's possessions. Those who had stood trial in their military uniforms had had those uniforms stripped of all insignia and decorations. Those materials had been placed in storage at Nuremberg. Field Marshal Keitel's medals and decorations, including his Knight's Cross and World War I Iron Crosses, were all destroyed, along with his Field Marshal's baton. Strangely, his two golden party badges were retained, though the swastikas were defaced, before being handed over to the finance director of the U.S. occupation zone in Germany for sale to help offset the cost of the executions, which had run to some $4,500. Regarding Colonel General Jodl, all of his decorations and medals were destroyed. Hermann Göring had many decorations, and was captured wearing his distinctive neck assemblage of the Grand Cross of the Iron Cross, the Knight's Cross, and the World War I Pour le Mérite, or Blue Max. The Americans destroyed all of these decorations, as well as his World War I Iron Cross First Class. However, Göring's solid gold Nazi Party badge, his diamond-studded Pilot's Observer's badge, and other decorations made from precious metals were denazified by scratching out or otherwise defacing the swastikas before they too were sent to the finance director to be sold, presumably for scrap. However, Göring had many sets of his medals, and copies of his Blue Max, Grand Cross and other decorations were recovered from his train at Berchtesgaden Station, or looted from his private property, and survive in collections around the world today. Although not hanged at Nuremberg, Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, former head of the German Navy, received ten years imprisonment at Nuremberg. His U-boat war badge with diamonds was taken from him, its swastika crudely excised, and this was also sent to the finance director as scrap jewellery. Most of the executed had left behind papers, letters, or diaries in their cells. These were gathered up and sorted into categories, though some of this material subsequently disappeared. All uniforms in storage, bearing Nazi insignia, were burned. All other clothing, personal possessions, and less precious jewellery were turned over to the relatives of the executed along with any cash up to a thousand Reichmarks. All other cash and precious stones went to the finance directorate. One man was missing from the cremations in October 1946. Robert Lai had been head of the German labour front under Hitler. The American psychologist at Nuremberg, Dr. Douglas Kelly, thought that Lai was mentally ill, but before further tests could be made, Lai managed to hang himself in his cell on the 24th of October 1945. The body was cremated, but in a bizarre move, Dr. Kelly had Lai's brain smuggled out of the prison for study, and a section of Lai's brain tissue was found among Kelly's papers in 2013, long after he also killed himself in 1958. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.